Today I've got this nice problem that I found in a 2014 issue of Math Magazine, and it has to do with a weighted version of the harmonic series. So let's see what we've got. Let's so, say we've got a sequence of real numbers, I'll call them a sub n, so that the limit of that sequence is equal to capital A, which is a real number. In other words, the limit exists and is not infinite. And then our goal is to determine the following limit. So it's the limit as n goes to infinity of a naught over n plus k plus a1 over n plus k plus 1 added all the way up to a sub n minus 1 times k over n plus nk. But quickly, let's observe that we could write that in summation notation as follows. Well, what would maybe be the simplest version of this problem? I think it would probably be the case when the a n was a constant sequence. And if it's a constant sequence, well, we could factor all of these out because they're all the same. And we might as well look at the case when all of these in the numerator are one. And that's actually kind of a well-known problem. So let's look at that first as a warm-up and see if that helps us. So in other words, we're looking for the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n plus k plus 1 over n plus k plus 1 plus added all the way up to 1 over n plus n k. Great. And the trick here is to write this as the difference of two partial sums of the harmonic series that start at the beginning. Because that's essentially what we have here. Notice we've got reciprocals of natural numbers added up between n plus k and n plus nk. Okay, so let's make that rewrite. So, like I said, I'm going to rewrite this as the difference of two partial sums of the harmonic series. That means my first is going to be 1 plus half plus third, and then that is going to end at 1 over n plus nk. So that's going to go from the very beginning all the way here. But that includes lots of terms that we don't have here. In fact, all of the ones before 1 over n plus k. So that means I need to subtract those off. So I'll subtract off 1 plus half all the way down to 1 over n plus k minus 1. Okay, nice. But now I'm going to introduce a little bit of notation, and this is maybe a well-known sequence, the so-called harmonic numbers and they're defined like this. So I'll index them by m because we don't have m on the board. So the mth harmonic number is defined to be 1 plus half plus third ending at 1 over m. So in other words, it's the partial sum, the mth partial sum of the harmonic series. Okay, but now keeping this in mind, let's notice that all of this first term can be rewritten as h sub n plus n k. And then all of this second term can be written as h sub n plus k minus 1. Okay, so let's bring that down. So now we have the limit as n goes to infinity of, so it'll be h n plus n k and then minus h n plus k minus 1. But I've put a little bit of separation in there because now we're going to add and subtract the same thing. In other words, we're going to add the number 0 to aid in some simplification. And this is based off the following fact, and that is that the limit of the difference between the harmonic number and the natural log actually has a value, and that's called the euler mascheroni constant. We did a video on it before. So that's defined as follows. The limit as m goes to infinity of, let's see, h sub m minus the natural log of m. But what that really means is that h sub m is growing asymptotically to gamma plus the natural log of m. So in other words, if I maybe add and subtract gamma like this, then I can make a nice replacement. So this can be replaced with natural log of n plus nk, 
whereas this second term can be replaced with natural log of n plus k plus or minus one, I should say. So here, this is really kind of having to do with asymptotic growth. Maybe to step back a little bit, a classic way to calculate this limit would be to recognize it as a limit of a Riemann sum and thus an integral. That being said, I think we did that on the channel when we first looked at harmonic numbers, so I think it's nice to do it this way this time. Okay, so now let's see what we have. This can now be written as the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of n plus nk over n plus k minus one, using natural log rules to put that kind of stuff together. But now let's note that we can divide the numerator as well as the denominator by n, and that'll give us k plus one in the numerator and one plus k minus one over n in the denominator. But this k minus one over n will trend off towards zero, meaning that our final limit is simply the natural log of k plus one. Okay, so there we've done it. We've done the warm-up problem. So now let's go on to our main goal. Now we're ready for our main goal, which let's recall was this limit over here, either written expanded or in summation notation. And before we get started, I'll just mention that our argument will use the warm-up that we did, as well as the fact that AN has a limit of capital A, or we're calling it capital A. Okay, so now let's get to it. So since AN converges to A, that means by the precise definition of the limit, Given an epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a natural number n such that, well, if n is bigger than or equal to n, then, well, the terms of the sequence are very, very close to the limiting value. In other words, the absolute value of a n minus capital A is less than epsilon, but I'm actually gonna write this as epsilon over K. Let's just choose our N so that we're smaller than epsilon over K instead of epsilon. And this epsilon is chosen arbitrarily. Okay, nice. Now, what do we wanna do from here? Let's look at the following object. So it'll be the sum as j goes from zero up to n minus one times k of a sub j over n plus k plus j. So that's like our goal. And then minus capital A over n plus k plus j. And these could be inside of the same sum, or we could have written them in two different sums. It doesn't really matter because they're finite sums, so those are the same, but I'll just write it like this. But now let's use the triangle inequality to bring this absolute value to the inside. So that'll allow us to write this as the sum as j goes from zero to n minus one times k of the absolute value of aj minus capital A over n plus k plus j, so something like that. But let's recall that we're trying to find the limit as n goes to infinity. That means, well, we're going to eventually get bigger than this capital N term. That means some of these terms in this sum will be below that capital N term and some will be equal to or above. So that motivates us to split this up into those two cases. So this is going to be equal to the sum as j goes from zero up to capital N minus one of aj minus capital A over N plus K plus J. So something like that. And then plus, well, the rest of them. So that'll be the sum as J goes from capital N up to lowercase N minus one times K of AJ minus A over N plus K plus J. Okay, great. But now let's maybe start building an inequality in here. So let's maybe replace this equal sign with a less than, and then replace all of these aj minus a's with epsilon over k. 
So why can we do that? Well, that's because all of those j's are bigger than or equal to n. And we know when the index is bigger than or equal to capital N, this difference is less than or equal to epsilon over k. So that's how we made that replacement. Okay, so that's good. Then another nice thing that we could do is replace this denominator with its smallest possible value. But if we're replacing it with its smallest possible value, then we're pushing the inequality in the correct direction. So what's the smallest possible value of this denominator? Well, it's gonna be the first term when j is equal to n. So I'm gonna replace that index j with just simply n. Because after that, well, you're just going to get things that are smaller and smaller and smaller. Thus, what we started with is smaller than what we ended up with after that replacement. Okay, well, let's do the same replacement over here with the denominator. Well, the smallest denominator here will be achieved when j is equal to zero. So I can just erase that there. Okay, nice. But now let's see if we can rewrite this nicely. So this is going to be equal to, well, let's write it down here maybe, one over n times k, and then we'll have the sum as j goes from zero up to n minus one of the absolute value of aj minus capital A. And then, well, now we're just adding the same number to itself, well, a certain number of times, and that number is n minus one times k minus capital N plus one. So that means we just get this object times that. So let's write that down. So I'm gonna have an epsilon over k out front, and then I'll have lowercase n minus one times k minus capital N plus one over lowercase n plus k plus capital N. Okay, nice. And again, that's just from adding all of these terms to themselves the correct number of times. Now let's apply a limit, but let's maybe think about this while we're doing it. So notice that this stuff that I'm putting this peach box around, this is just a number. And actually this number does not depend on lowercase n. So if we're going to take the limit with respect to lowercase n, this is a constant. Meanwhile, as lowercase n approaches infinity, one over n plus k approaches zero pretty clearly because the denominator is getting larger and larger and larger and larger. But then as lowercase n approaches infinity here, the only thing that matters is the coefficients of n in the numerator and the denominator. Well, that means that this k plus capital N doesn't matter, this minus n plus one doesn't matter, and this minus one here doesn't matter. Then we're left with just n times k over n, the n's don't matter, the k cancels this k, meaning our limit is epsilon. So like I said, this is the limit as n goes to infinity. So what we've just shown is that the limit of this difference is less than epsilon, but that epsilon was chosen to be arbitrary. But since that epsilon was chosen to be arbitrary, that means that the limit of this difference must be equal to zero. So let's start with that on the next board and then finish it off. Okay, so this is what we just ended up with. But let's maybe notice that this term right here is our goal. We can see that over here, that's our goal. Well, the limit of that is our goal at least. And then this bit over here is our warm up. And, you know, immediately we don't know that the limit exists because if the limit of a difference is equal to zero, well, again, that doesn't mean that the limit exists. Just consider the sequence n and then the other sequence n. Well, those limits don't exist because they just grow off infinitely, but their difference is always equal to zero. That being said, our warm up limit does exist. So since our warm up limit does exist, that forces our goal limit to exist as well. Okay, so that's good news. So that means we can take all of this and say that, well, our goal limit must be equal to our warm up limit, well, times A, I should say, because their difference is zero. So in other words, we have the limit as N goes to infinity of A naught over N plus K added 
all the way up to a sub n times k minus one over n plus n k. In other words, our goal is equal to a times the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n plus k, added all the way up to one over n plus n k. That was our warm up. But we found, we found the value of that. And that was the natural log of k plus one. So that means our goal limit is simply a times the natural log of k plus one, which I think is a pretty nice result. Okay, so if you're still around, thanks for sticking around. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. It would really help us out. And that's a good place to stop.